Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. In this short clip, we discuss why spreading may be uneven across the width of the web. Occasionally, this may be desirable. If, for example, you wanted to target a specific lane for wrinkle reduction, or if, for example, you wanted to open up a single slit a bit more. However, only one spreader of the dozen types can do this. More commonly, spreading is uneven by some shortcoming in design or maintenance, or by webs that are uneven. This can cause slits to overlap and even create wrinkles. I know your time is precious, so let's get started. Let us begin by defining spreading power in two different ways. For unslit webs, the most useful quantitative definition of local spreading power is the local CD stresses. Unfortunately, we cannot at present measure CD stresses, so we either have to model them or infer them from behavior. In any case, we would usually prefer that the spreading stresses have an even profile across the width, especially if the web itself is reasonably even. For slit webs, the topic of this week's show, the most useful quantitative definition of local spreading power is the width of the spreading gaps. While the average gaps may be varying from one millimeter on stiff materials to about one centimeter on flexible materials, such as some non-wovens, we will usually want the gap widths to be uniform across the width. However, this is usually not possible if the slit widths are not uniform. Wide webs usually have wide gaps, everything else being equal. For simplicity in this show, all of our slit widths will be equal. Gap widths can be measured in many ways using photo eyes, cameras, and other instruments. Unfortunately, there are many ways that the gaps may be non-uniform with even uniform slit widths. Some of these have been covered in two previous clips. Here we will cover baggy webs, intentional profiling that is possible with a D-bar spreader, uneven spreading caused by spreader design shortcoming, and uneven spreading caused by poor maintenance. Baggy lanes are common with most web materials. They will spread unevenly as a consequence. Slit separation will also be uneven. As we showed in previous clip, the average spreading power is measured as the average gap width. In this example, the spreading power is good, an average of one millimeter. However, the uniformity is poor, with one gap at two millimeters, and worse yet, another gap is zero, and those two rolls are tied up. A spreader malfunction could cause this, though that would be rare and easy to tell. If the narrower gaps change position, it probably isn't the spreader, because spreader shape is usually fixed. If the gap pattern flips when the supply roll is flipped, then it certainly isn't the spreader. So, if not the spreader, what is causing the uneven gaps? It is a baggy lane tracking to one side. In paper, this might be a moisture streak. In any case, the narrower the slit widths the more the authority the baggy web has to move the web sideways. Before we leave the topic of uneven spreading due to baggy lanes, let me remind you of what we learned 
in Web 201.23c. That is, it is not possible to spread baggy edges. There is one profilable spreader. By that I mean a spreader that is capable of targeting more spreading in one CD location and or less in another CD location. We might use that capability for uneven spreading to counter, for example, an uneven web. As seen in the top figure, Gap 2 is wide and Gap 3 is narrow or non-existent. This might be due, for example, to a baggy lane as we saw in the last slide. This happens even with uniform curvature of the spreader. The unique feature of the D-bar is that it can put more spreading into Gap 3 by putting more curvature there and less into Gap 2 by putting less curvature there. This is done by a series of independently adjustable uh, jacks. However, this spreader has many costs. First, it is a sliding spreader, and that may not be tolerable for scratch-sensitive webs. Second, it is complicated to adjust these jacks. That means a well-meaning but ill-informed operator could tie up rolls while trying to eliminate a roll tie-up. Much more common is uneven spreading that is unintentional. Several spreaders have inherent design shortcomings that cause them to be uneven. The edge pull and tenter have U-shaped spreading profiles with more spreading at the edges and little or even no spreading at the center. On the other hand, expander rollers have an M-shaped profile where the peak spreading occurs perhaps near the quarter points. No less common is uneven spreading on spreaders that have an uneven manufacturer or an uneven wear or an uneven operation. An example we've already mentioned is a D-bar. If the operator adjusts a kink at the center of the bar to perhaps open up gaps there, the gaps at the quarter points will close up. That would be time to reset everything to a uniform curvature as described in the Engineering Service Manual. Another example is bumps or valleys in the diametral profile of a roller. Here, the web will tend to move towards those surface errors and perhaps, in the process, close up the gaps there. We covered the mechanics of that in our award-winning Web 101 class. Most operators should know that we can, to an extent, change the amount of bowed roller spreading in the center versus the ends by small changes in bow orientation. Pointing the bow more out of the sheet will give more spreading near the edges and less in the center. Pointing the bow more into the sheet will give more spreading at the center and less at the edges. If the web is uniform, and if the spreader is properly sized and designed, pointing the bow near the textbook direction, as described in our Web 101 class, should result in uniform gaps. Also, as we covered in our Web 101 class, is how the bowed roller responds to bow magnitude. 
bow magnitude can be selected during purchasing as well as adjusted on one special type of bowed roller. As seen here, a small bow magnitude will result in small spreading gaps and a medium bow will expectedly result in larger gaps. However, as we described in our class, increasing the bow beyond a certain point will cause the quarter point spreading problems and perhaps even roll tie-ups and wrinkling. In our class, we gave a starting point bow magnitude and how to recognize excessive spreading power troubles and why these poor spreading design problems occur. Thank you so very much for joining me in my plant practical series. You can learn more about rollers, spreading, wrinkling, and other must-know subjects in my ever-popular, award-winning Web 101 class, as well as in our must-have 750-page Web Handling Handbook.